and I had done municipal work for decades, uh, and they were aging out, so I had a new young guy. Imagine that. And um, we merged with High Sports, um, and so now we are essentially uh, the Bucks County hub for the regional law firm. Okay. Um, so we would like to limit development in our rural community. Can you provide an example where you've successfully guided a municipality in this direction? Uh, yes. Um, let me answer by saying there are, there are processes. Um, start with the fundamental premise that um, property owners have constitutional right to use their property and not have the property taken. So that's, that's the starting point. Um, but the, uh, the countervailing uh, interest is the municipality's right, uh, as delegated from the Commonwealth, to manage land use. And there are both uh, zoning overlays for dimensional and, uh, and use uh, limitations or allowances. And then there's the processes, um, the land development process going through uh, the uh, planning commission, board of supervisors, the county, all the agency reviews. Uh, my, my experience, uh, especially most recently, was uh, in a conditional use hearing, and uh, I'll just say that when the municipality takes a position on, uh, on an issue, and conditional use hearing is like, is like a zoning hearing, but by the, uh, by the municipal leaders, so certain use is allowed by conditional use, um, if the township takes a position, the township can actually um, be a party in the trial. So the trial is the conditional use hearing. Um, we represented uh, a township and a special counsel and uh, essentially prosecuted the case uh, where a uh, large scale retailer who likes a certain type of store and, uh, and lots of gas pumps uh, and bright lights and a lot of signs, wanted to locate on a very prominent corner, and the, uh, the Board of Supervisors hired us to defeat them in their effort. Uh, and we were successful not only at the, uh, at the zone here in the board level, but actually at the reverse of the common pleas level, and then won it back at the common court level. Um, so that was an example of municipality Take a position, we support the position um, through essentially litigation and then uh, prevailed, and the township's policy decision was uh, affirmed. Okay, great. But there are other ways too. So, mm -hmm. uh, absent litigation, because litigation isn't always the way, right. the township has uh, ordinances and standards for land use review, and um, those, uh, the township is not without some leverage in the land development process, so if it's an outright ban, then it needs to be um, appropriate, right? there's fair share, there's different types of uses, uh, the, 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 the Pennsylvania Bar Institute used to have CLEs, Continuing Legal Education mm -hmm. Credit, Courses, and they would call them popular or locally unpopular land uses. So, I don't know name them, but uh, land uses that, that people just didn't want to see in their municipality. And frankly, some are protected by federal law. And so, the municipality needs to take an educated approach on how they mitigate the amount of development and uh, when outright uh, prohibition 
is not possible, then uh, mitigation, mitigation, mitigation. And there are mechanisms and ordinances uh, that will help you do that. And part of the policy of the board, if the policy is to limit or reduce the amount of influx development, whether it be residential, commercial, industrial, uh, would be to take a look at those ordinances, uh, and the uh, comprehensive plan is essentially the roadmap, and then the, all the ordinances that follow are the support or uh, or tools to to follow the roadmap. So we probably want to start with <clears throat> does a comprehensive plan match our vision? Okay. Yeah. The, our next question was related to how would you approach reviewing our ordinances in order to minimize the risk of development, which I think plays off of saying review the comprehensive plan, make sure that there's some, that that's the direction and the vision you still want to go, right? I yes. mean, so the comp plan should be reviewed. Yes. And then. And there's a standard is, is a minimum every 10 years. And there are great resources at the county level for comprehensive plan review. Um, it's a process, um, but it's an important process, and it's best effectuated with buy-in from your, your involved uh, citizens, so your, your planning commission, your other volunteer, your recreation boards, your I mean, civic groups, uh, whoever you can get to uh, to provide input, and as policymakers, you're you're kind of driving the the question of where do we want to see Upper Frederick in the next ten years or mm -hmm. through the next ten years, okay. and there are plenty of professional resources to help uh, to help you uh, prepare that ultimate document, the comprehensive plan, and then you know, when, when someone comes in with a, a land use that they'd like to locate up a Frederick Township, you know, the, first, the first question in my mind is, does it fit, does it fit the plan? Is it zoned for that? Um, well, if it doesn't, if it's not zoned for that, it doesn't fit the plan, then at first blush, uh, it kind of looks like no. Uh, and then there could you know, go any direction from mm -hmm. that. Okay. You're well versed with something like that, Mr. Pans, are like reviewing all those. So, someone comes in and says, "I want to put this here." Uh, you're you're completely confident in your ability to review all this and with the comp plan. And so that's uh, that's that's something that I do just about daily. Um, usually, the township has someone on staff who's in the either. Licensing and inspections department, building department, or the, uh, or the sure. planning department, who will accept applications or, or phone calls regarding the you know, interest in doing something here in Upper Frederick Township, and uh, and your staff would typically deal with that. Uh, when they get stuck, they would you know reach out to the lifeline which could be the lawyer, or it could be your engineer, uh, you know, depending on how you have it set up and, and what the working relationship is. We're, we're, that's a concern of ours, like we said, we're working down that avenue now, as far as the professionals. We're, we're trying to put everybody in place to accomplish this objective. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that, is kind of, that is exactly what our comprehensive plan says we want to do here, stay rural. So uh, in, in your, uh, day to day, this is something that's 90% of your work is dealing with yes. land development and things like that. Right, looking through the zoning so, ordinance and or the building codes, depending on what the nature of the question is, uh, reviewing comprehensive plans. I do that. I do that deal. Okay. We are tight on time. <laughs> so if you don't mind, if I just jump to um, do you. Uh, can you provide an example of dealing with difficult code enforcement issue and how it was guided to resolution? 
Um, We're just experiencing a few of those now. Yeah. I have an example, but it's not one that you want to hear. Let <laughs> 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 me think of a good one. Uh, Would you have a standard protocol for dealing with code enforcement? So the or key, process, yeah. The, the key in my mind for code enforcement mm -hmm. is consistency. Be consistent. Uh, I, I have represented municipalities where uh, there was inconsistency in the, the front line folks, the, the zoning officers, the building code enforcement people, and in any level of municipal government, I believe consistency is paramount because people should, should know when they come into a township what to expect. Um, I'm coming up with Frederick Township. I better have all my I's dotted and T's crossed because they have a checklist and I need to comply with everything on the list or I go home and come back another day. Um, difficult building code issues. Uh, so frequently, I would say frequently, uh, someone will come into a public meeting and say, uh, Hey, do you see what's going on down at the corner of, you know, Fifth and Vine? No, what's going on? Oh, this, that, and the other thing. All right, we'll look at it tomorrow. The manager, the code enforcement officer, goes out, checks it out. And then, you know, knock, knock, knock. Property owner looks like you're doing X, Y, and Z. Um, that's not a permitted. Come on in. Let's look at the ordinance together. Let's look fill out this application. And so I think having uh, documentation, uh, a process and a consistent approach are the keys to handling code enforcement issues. Okay. You know, whether it's whether it's retroactively or prospectively. Okay. And then um, I think lastly is, do you have experience with historical buildings and working through either yes. identifying it's historical, making it, you know, and etc. So. Uh, Yes, not uh, identifying. I, there are plenty of people out in the world who are expert at that. Uh, I rely on Yeah, them. I didn't really mean identify. <laughs> That's I meant, all right. like, what, what do you have to maybe, do from a legal did. perspective of uh, pursuing I, and... I've never taken a building from building on the corner to on the National Register. Okay. Um, I dare say that, uh, that if I reached out to Gil High, he would give me the roadmap immediately. Yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not a, uh, that's not an everyday occurrence, in my mind, for a municipal solicitor. But uh, if it's yeah, important to Frederick, uh, it's important to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything on this that you want to hit on? Uh, I just said uh, no, respectful time. I was time. just, uh, you know, Ethics, you know, you touched on that. You, have you ever had any ethics violations or have a client that ever had? No, no, no yeah. Okay. Um, and then it was Did just. Did you say no? Yeah, I said no and no. You've uh, never had a client? He's never had one. He's never oh, had okay. a client that had one. That's wow. what he could <laughs> say. Um, and then it was just, you know, the sunshine, uh, the ethics, like you're up on all that. Yes. Okay. And then it was just, you know, the zoning, working with the professionals, land development, things like that. Uh, and, and I think you had said that uh, going through the zoning and things like that is that you would help us move forward here. Okay. I can and I will. Okay. Yeah. And I'll encourage you to get a manager. Yeah. Can I? We are. We, we do. Uh, you got that message. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not just from you. And then how long is your commute? your commute to Upper Frederick and do you charge for travel time? I do believe your agreement says you do charge for travel time. Yeah, so I, we have, uh, my primary base of operations is Doylestown. Um, we do have an Doylestown office. The, um, my proposal included uh, half of the hourly rate for travel. So uh, if I come out here for a meeting, uh, once a week, I would, I would charge for half the travel. It takes me two hours, you have to go an hour. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
And then you had a blended rate in your agreement right. of 205. So is that the rate you're talking about, or it would be your personal rate? Because your rate's uh, higher than others. It's the two. Okay, great. The, uh, the other rates uh, were yep, that's by right. comparison. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Well, you go. You're free to go, <laughs> Mr. Panzer. I appreciate your time. I enjoy being here. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, thank folks. You. Take care. Good night. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night. Good night. Is this riveting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this worth, worth missing your evening at home? What? You got any questions for these gentlemen, Miss Madeline? Do you want to be an attorney? You want to be a solicitor for a township? <laughs> I think she's more the judge than she's the judge. <laughs> right? <laughs> like to use this comfy chair, you're welcome to. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we don't have to do the trick out <laughs> So is, uh, since you're, you're here and I'm, and I'm all, um, yeah, look at that, you didn't brush your knees. <laughs> um, I guess in, in the, for the sake of transparency, you know, obviously we have a series of questions. We're asking um, each of the interviewees the same questions. I started off with an introduction. You're going to know the introduction, but to be fair and consistent so that you hear what I told them, I think is, uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you the same introduction. Um, so as you are aware, Upper Frederick's a second class township with approximately 3,700 residents and a three person board. We are a member of the Central Park Valley uh, Regional Planning Committee, um, and in that committee, along with Lower Frederick, um, we are the rural share, um, Lower Frederick and Upper Frederick, um, related to that um, planning commission. We have a vacant township manager position. Um, Kate is our full-time bookkeeper and administrator, um, and then we also have the public works director with three full-time employees and then some... Uh, part-time seasonal help. Um, the two, three of us, Bill and I, are both newly elected. The only reason we're going through this process is it was re re recommended at our first PSATS class that review the professionals that support the township So um, every few years. So um, during that process, uh, during that class, um, we decided that this should be, you know, I, I had it on my list of things to do. Um, and I uh, discovered um, during this process that you have been supporting our township for 49 years. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone not you personally. Number, you know? No, not until I saw your, the, the, I mean, I'd always heard that um, your predecessor had been here a long time, but define a long time. A long time to me is a different long time than to Madeline. <laughs> the audience because I, I thought Madeline that. wasn't even thought of <laughs> when your dealers started supporting our township. I thought they agreed, they all they could agree on that it was in excess of 40 years. Yes, so but it's 40, 50 years now. Okay, so 
Um, Bill has deferred to me to ask all questions, except unless he has a follow-up question. Is that correct? That's perfect. That's just pretty much what we've been doing. <laughs> um, do you need, would you like um, an opportunity to say anything, or are you good with me jumping into questions? I'm happy with you just jumping in. Okay, great. Okay. Can you describe your strategy for working with municipalities? Um, for example, do you take more of a backseat approach or more direct? And can you explain? I go to a little bit of both, really. Uh, there are municipalities where solicitors, you know, kind of run the show. Uh, that is not us. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't take a, you know, way in the backseat. You know, don't mm -hmm. sit here and allow something to happen uh, that would be inappropriate or that could jeopardize, you know, reputation of attention or get a supervisor in any sort of trouble or we'll make a bad decision, we'll speak up, we jump in. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a little more proactive, I think, as between the two. Okay, great. What are some of your biggest challenges that you've experienced with working with municipalities? I, we don't have a lot of uh, challenges. I, I cut my teeth, um, be candid, in, in Perky on the Township. And uh, they are well run, uh, strong township manager. Um, and they're a pretty cohesive bunch. Um, they talk things out, they're very logical. Um, after the elections and they get on the board, it seems like that is all out the window. Everybody's focus is on what are the best interests of the township. Mm -hmm. You know, now we get there. Um, I mean, we don't have a problem with communication. Most people are happy to listen to us and respect our opinions. Uh, we represent many municipalities, uh, but not too too many. You know, yeah. I'm principally responsible for three. Uh, yeah. Other members of my township you know, have a couple. Uh, Jamie and Tatiana has two or three. Uh, but then in addition to that, some zoning sort of animals, et cetera. Challenges, uh, it, I, I guess if there were one, now the one comes to mind, is, is really just keeping up with the law. Oh my goodness. You know, in the very beginning, 30 years ago when I started, you know, there was the MPC and the second class township code, and that was kind of it. Now, um, you know, so open records and sunshine. Not that those are a bad thing, but uh, they're fluid. You know, mm -hmm. you think you know what the law is until a case comes down and says, no, that's not what the law meant at all. You know, you have these problems. Mm -hmm. um, you know, communicating, um, having having personal opinions, putting them on a website um, or, or a Facebook page. You know, can be problematic. Um, it didn't used to be, but you know now it is. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, it's just kind of keeping up and knowing everything. The, the solution is uh, we have a lot of good resources and people with a lot of experience, so we know. Okay. But and I can give you some examples. I mean, the township building project, you know, I, I wouldn't have known off the top, you know, that, you know, you have to, there's something called the Prevailing Wage Act. There's something mm -hmm. called the Separations Act. You have to bill separately, um, not bill, but uh, bid it out separately, you know, for the electric work. The, um, and the construction part itself, mm -hmm. you know, another, and you know, these are ways municipalities get themselves in trouble. Yeah, you, know, you can't just hire a general contractor. You can't hire one contractor to do it. You know, there's a whole okay. lot that goes, you know, with the bidding process. Uh, you know, litany of ways to get in trouble, you know, with developers. Uh, mm -hmm. Just look at your neighbor, uh, New Hanover Township, now looking at a 150 million dollar lawsuit. Um, so it, it's a minefield. It, it mm -hmm. really is. Uh, and it's, and it 